They have served and served well. They have helped shape character and personality, yet allowed creativity and individuality. They gave their lives to the education system. This is reminiscent, and this is their story. We forgot them somehow. Where are they now? We forgot them I became a student of the RC Boys School in 1948. Actually, I was born in Monrepo, a little area sandwiched between Passios and Poale. And I ref at four years, I refused to go to the uh, pri a primary school which was run by one Miss Dean, the Smiths. I said I didn't like that school because it was looking too old. And the reason was that I had seen the, 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 that big school in Castries. So when, I, when they asked me which school I'd like to go to, I said the big school I saw in Castries. Well, during the process, I, I smashed the slate they had bought with, for me. And I smashed my brother's slate also and I was whipped that day by my grandmother who was the one who attempted to bring me to school for the first time but from the time I got to the RC school I, I was a happy student I had some very good teachers like Miss John Miss um, Snack in the infant section in the primary school I had people like um, Raymond John, both husbands, Kenneth Combi. There were one or two I was afraid of, I won't mention. But certainly there, there was one in particular that I was very afraid of. I didn't want to go to his class. But then I went through all the classes up to standard seven. And by the time I got to standard seven, I obtained two standard six certificates. And I was just bored. And fortunately for me, the, the principal in those days, you call him head teacher, Augustine, not Augustine, Matthew George Sinclair, was an astute person. He, he recognized my boredom and he actually called me from the class and told me he wanted me to be a teacher. I didn't choose to be a teacher. I was chosen by Matthew George Sinclair. What he did was to tell me to tell my mother go and tell my mother that he wanted me to be a teacher. And you can imagine the, the amount of joy and elation. My mother was so happy. She said to me, Tibai, so I met Likwa Lavlo for a teacher for DV. So I reported to the principal that my mother had agreed and that was it. The following day, he sent me to teach with one Cyril. And from that very day, I, I recognized that I had it in me to become a a good teacher, not just an ordinary, but a good teacher. And he sent me to study with um, guys like teacher Joe, Morgan, Augustine, and a few others who were then um, first grade teachers, what they call PT1s. As a monitor, well, I had no books. I read their books, I read their notes. And I wrote my first exam, teacher's exam, as a monitor, and I passed. And I never looked back. But that same year, Mr. St. Clair was transferred to Bexo and was replaced by um, Augustine St. Clair, another St. Clair from Labry. We call him Redhead. We called him Redhead. He had other names by which he was called, but we called him Red, Redhead as a nickname because his head was red, his hair was red. So we called him Redhead. And he found me there as a PT2, having passed my exam, but not being appointed. And he was the one who recommended me to become appointed as a teacher. And that was in 1959. So that is how I became a teacher. I passed all my exams, went to, to, to became a CE, a certificated assistant teacher, um, which qualified you to become a principal. As a certificate assistant teacher, you qualified to become a principal. Or head teacher, as it was called at the time. And um, went to teacher's college in 64, 65, and returned to the RC. Um, I taught at the senior school for, for a little while, when 
I had to replace somebody. And the, the manager, who was Father Guru at the time, came to Mr. Sintley and asked him to recommend somebody whom, who can be trusted. What happened as far as the, the becoming a principal is concerned, I, I lived at Ravin Shabbat at the time. And um, when one afternoon, the manager, who was Father Guru, came home, he says, good afternoon, Mr. Father. He says, good afternoon, Father. And what brings you here? As far as I know, Father, it is only when there's somebody who is very sick and entitled to extreme unction that priests visit. And he had a good laugh. We had a good laugh. He says, no, I've not come to administer extreme unction, but I've come from a board meeting of the Catholic um, managers, manage, management. And they have asked me to, to ask you to hold on at the school because um, Mr. John, who was acting for Mr. Sinclair, who was at the time in England, had been accepted to study at the University of the West Indies. I said, Father, are you serious? You have been asked to ask me to hold on for Mr. John? I told him straight, Father, I don't think I'm interested. This hold on thing you're talking about, Father, I don't think I'm interested. He says, okay, Mr. Father, we, I know the situation, I understand it perfectly. But they have also asked me to give you time to consider. And you have as much as uh, two weeks, and we would appreciate it by then you tell us, give us a positive response. But I was subjected to so much pressure, starting from my wife, who told me how people love to um, be promoted, and I'm getting it on a silver platter, and I'm refusing, and I'm being rude to the priest and all that. I said, well, if you if you feel you can do it, you should have told the priest to give it to you since I didn't want it. But then because of the pressure, eventually I succumbed and I told him, yes, Father, I think I'll do it. And having agreed to do it, I decided to give it all. To give it my all. And I never turned back. Well, I had taught for 10 years in all. And I taught, I, I was a principal for, for 28 years. So I gave to that school a total of 38, 38 years of this. You could do a job like this without have getting, you know, having challenges to face. Uh, among them, the children. The children came from so many different areas. So very, very difficult areas like Marsh, uh, um, Wilton Yard, the areas like Conway, and um, even some of the areas that were considered good areas. You got children coming from them, problem children. Uh, children whose parents worked at hotels and who, who saw their, their, their mothers only when she was off. Mothers who had, who had to leave before they got up from, you know, from sleep and who came back home um, after they had gone to bed. Numerous problems. Problems with, with, with parents who, whom you called to the school to speak with and who ignored you. I had to do some field work as a principal. You know, there was this boy, for example, who refused to tell his mother that I wanted to see her. And I had to borrow Mrs. Cadet's car and go to, to Laguerre, only to find that the boy lived very near to Laguerre. So there were always problems. There were problems with parents who did not understand, you know, what it was to be a good parent. I got a lot of opposition from some parents. I had problems with, 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 with some teachers, you know, who, who thought they could do things their way and not the way they were taught because they, they, they failed to realize that we all went to the same training school and I knew how to do a lot of the things that they were required to do. And when, they, when I found them doing the opposite, I had no choice but to, you know, chastise them. Like I remember any time you would be taking a five, you know, sometimes as a teacher, you know, you're tired, you go on the, the balcony to take a five. And you just say, the keys. That was a signal that the boss was around. And trust me, no matter how bad we thought we were, when you heard those keys, boy, you just got back to your station. Because the great sheriff, that's how we call him, eh? affectionately, the sheriff was in town. And so when you heard the keys, you knew that was time to cut off your, your slackness and get back to work. I visited classes regularly. I did a lot of clinical supervision. I wanted to know what was happening in, in my classrooms. 
because it was important that people did what they were supposed to do the way it was supposed to be done. That was the only way you could get results. Mr. Farrell would meticulously come around your class and examine every little aspect of what you did. He checked your preparation. He checked how you developed your activities and how you evaluated these activities. Of course, as a consequence, he would tell you many recommendations that he thought you should employ. I also got um, pressure from some city schools which thought that um, they had no competition because I had not gone to university. There was, a, there was competition as far as sports, as far as scholarships and the only time I think I really got some respect from the particular principal was when one year RC boys got, um, we had a class taught by Gilroy Satney. And that year, we, the school got, um, out of seven city council scholarships, we got six. And the Ave Maria got the other. And out of eight government scholarships, we got seven, and the Anglican school got the, the other. Preparing students for the then government scholarship exam and the CCC scholarship exams. So when he entrusted me with that class, I was saying to me, Mr. Fowell, I'm just a young teacher. Why are you putting me through this thing? I suppose he tell me, well, go on, do your best. Whether he, he had seen something in me that I did not see, he had grown some confidence and trust, but certainly I don't think I disappointed him. So all these achievements in sports, for example, we were tops in cricket, in football, in table tennis, you know, and I, and I myself personally took an interest in, in those sports. I played, I played cricket. I played a little football. I stopped when I realized I couldn't kick with my left foot. <laughs> I've been trained with CYO for a long time. I gave it up. But I played cricket and I played table tennis. I always liked sports and wherever my school was playing, I was there to support. The first person you saw on the field was Mr. Fowell. Mr. Fowell never only considered one's academic qualifications, one's academic background. What was also important to him was the skill that one would also come with, whether you were able to play football, you were able to play cricket, you were a musician, it, you had to come with something extra to bring to the school. Because Mr. Fowell knew at any point in time he could call on you to help those students who are probably in football, who are into music, who are into drama, into poetry, just name it. Mr. Fowell always made sure that he got teachers who had that extra skill to teach at his school. Sometimes I learned new strategies, new techniques of doing things. And what I think I fell short in doing was to, to communicate that to, to my teachers. For example, I, I stopped, I almost stopped using the strap during the last six or five years of my tenure as a principal. And I, I became nicknamed Softy. The, the teachers said um, I was getting soft. Some of them, I, not all, some of them. And I didn't explain to them why I was doing it. And um, eventually I realized I should have, and I did. He was approachable, but sometimes in being approachable, the question or the answer you would want him to give you was not always that way. And so sometimes you would feel, he has not answered the question. He is... You know, it's almost like he has kind of dismissed you a bit, you know, and so on. And, you know, you could let him know that and he would, he would understand where you were coming from. Um, I, I cut down on the amount of corporal punishment that I used. And what it did was to create a, a better atmosphere, a better relationship between the students and myself. I used the book where I recorded demeanors. And um, I had a lot of dialogue, one-to-one -one relationship with students who were sent to me for punishment. And what I did, instead of punishing sometimes, I corrected. I had them to sign an agreement sometimes and had somebody in the class to, to, to witness as the first offense, as, as the first offense that I, and I, you know, it worked with many of the students. It worked wonderfully. And um, 
If I could have done that earlier, I think I would have, called, I would have been a better person. But um, it came about as a result of training, because I had some classes, some courses with, with um, the University of Lethbridge in Canada, Lethbridge University, and as, as well as um, Dr. Nicholson from the Uni University of the West Indies. So these sessions changed me and had me to look at myself as an administrator in a different, in different light. And it augured well for, for the relationship between myself and um, the students of the school. If I can start with teachers whom I admired, one stands out, um, Raymond John. When I, I remember when I refused to, to write, I said I was, I was not going to write my certificated examination in, um, in June because I had just passed to become a uh, to become a, 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 a PA1, PA2, sorry. I just succeeded and I said the six months. The exam date was changed from, from December to June because the school year began in, in, in January in those days. And then when that change came about, I thought I didn't have enough time to prepare for the exam and I said I would not do it. But people like Mario Centros and Earl John and Nato, they went and told him, so, Mr. Fowler said he's not writing the exam. And he called me and we had dialogue. He told me what, they had, what he had learned. And I told him, yes, I said so, sir, and I believe I'll stand by it. He says, no, you're not going to stand by it because I have a plan for you. And he organized a study group and he actually helped us. He actually supervised us. He actually spent time with us upstairs in the tower and I could not run away from it. And he, I singled out as one of my mentors. He really motivated me. He taught me as a, as a student and he motivated me as a teacher and insisted. And um, when I succeeded that exam, I had nobody else to thank for, for it but um, him. Um, there were other people I admired, people like Mrs. Gill, a stalwart in the system. Um, who else I can think of? Mrs. Thomas was one of those who my had very dedicated person. Her husband too. Um, at Teachers College, after Teachers College, she organized a group consisting of Kodra, Agatha James, and we, we met at the Anglican School at least twice a week on evenings to work on the mathematics project. We wrote um, the, the material as well as lesson plans for those subjects and it was very 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 rewarding to see that what we what we did was used not only in our schools in St. Lucia but in other schools in the Caribbean and parts of Africa. This is my 15th year of retirement as a principal and I am now enjoying something that I think only celebrities can enjoy. I come into contact with, with young men, of course some of them look older than I am, than I look, but I receive a kind of reception, a kind of attention, a kind of respect um, that is second to none. Not only from the students, but from, from their parents, from their, their, their brothers and sisters who, who, who single me out as the one person who helped to make them what they are. I think the only way a teacher can know how good a job he or she has done is after you have met those people whom you touched in society, out there, at work, on the field, you know. And, I, and, and this is what I'm, I'm saying. This, it's a joy. Um, one of, many of them remind me of the licks that I gave them. Inevitably, you'll find that. But they're quick to add, in most cases, that it helped to make them what they are. I must say that there are quite a few teachers whom I try to motivate as much as possible to encourage them to move on and to study and improve. But as, for, as far as 
the question that you have asked. I think what we have now in our system, we have many, many more qualified teachers in our schools than ever before. And the number keeps increasing. But what worries me is that I'm not sure that we're getting in all cases, I know there's some very, very dedicated teachers, but as to whether we are getting our money's worth, I am not sure. I think I know some teachers who, who teach for passion, who, who give their, their all to it, but I'm not sure that we couldn't do with a few more of these people in our system dedicated, committed to the job. The time he met me, as I remember that I was just about 18, there they about. He made it clear to me, Mr. Fernando, when you go to the bank to receive your money, ensure that you have earned every cent. I believe that our, some of our teachers need to be retrained. Yeah, retrained. And, and to get refresher courses and, and so that they could be more effective in the classroom. I'll tell you something. My last day at school, I put away all the shirt jacks that I wore. But I kept the black trousers because I could use them anywhere. But you see those shirt jacks? I've never worn one. I gave them away to the, um, to the, the, the nuns have a place in the in the Fuashu area. I gave them all, I put them all in the bag and I deposited them. And if you see anybody there wearing a blue shirt jacket, it's not Mr. Farah. I find retirement has been very, very exciting. Perhaps because I have, I prepared for it. One of the things that I have always done is to read. I'm, I've been an avid reader. And I even encourage some of my teachers to read a lot. The first thing he did for me was to introduce me to some reading material. And among the, read, among the reading material that I received from Mr. Farrell were books, novels written by Arthur Haley. And I read books like Hotel, Airport, Money Changers. He also had me to read the book called Roots. So it started with reading. You see, they already said in the past that a dog is, a, is man's best friend. But I believe that's for when dogs were, were, were different. Today I think a good book, a good book has been my best friend. And I read, I read a lot. I, I also, prepared myself by, by developing fishing skills. You know, I bought myself a boat and I fish and I enjoy fishing. I'll tell you why fishing is so enjoyable. Those two professions, fishing and teaching, both of these professions are, are, are very, require one to be very patient. And I believe that they are very I believe that's why Christ went among the fishermen. He went for, because he knew fishermen must have a lot of patience. And if he's going to select people to go out and teach, as he did, they would require very patience. So my retirement, I have never, never had a period of boredom I, I, I cannot think of a day that I have been born. Honestly, retirement has been the second best period of my life. I couldn't see myself in a classroom, although I feel if I go to a classroom, I could still be effective. And I have been lucky to have been selected, you know, as, as a, a commissioner. I'm on the Teaching Service Commission. I was a member of the Kashmi City Council as the deputy chairman. And uh, both of these things have been challenging 
eye openers for me and I've enjoyed doing that. I enjoy teaching. Teaching is it's a noble profession. At one time they called it a vocation. You know, you had to be special to be in the classroom. You had to be an example to the children you, you taught. And not just to the children, but to their parents and to the community in which you, 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 you lived. You had to stand up, you know. So, so, um, I might have done it again, but I may have done certain things differently. Especially as a principal, I had a love for children, a genuine love for children. I, I, I sometimes had to play the part of a father um, in that I had to feed. I had to feed some children. You know, I walked into the Wilton Yard by the time I came back, somebody would have thought that I went to smoke. But I went there because there was a guy called Schaefer who had a problem and I had to tell his mother, I can help you solve that problem, send him to school on mornings. Even if he doesn't have breakfast, I'll find breakfast, breakfast for him. And that boy has done well, remarkably well. And there are others whom I, whom I touched in a special way and helped, you know, as the people in the canteen look. My salary is not very big, but give them lunch for me today. And, I, and when the month ends, I'll pay you from my salary. You know, I would like people to remember me as a loving teacher, a caring principal, caring not just as far as students are concerned, but as far as the teachers who taught with me are concerned. I wanted to see them teach well, and I wanted to see them move on in life, become qualified and um, loved by their students also. I think we have a very serious problem in our society. Our students, there's a saying, she never got a shot. But our students lack so much these days. I don't know how we can reverse the trend. Just watch them in town. Um, you wonder whether they have caring parents. I don't think I can speak to students now because they might not even, they might not hear me and even if they hear me, they might not listen. They might say, Mate, what are you talking about? But even though they won't, you find one or two who might say what they say in the studio. This country needs, we need, um, we need some medication. Parents need to take control of their children. I don't know what is the main cause. Perhaps now we have more parents who are at work. And parental supervision is minimal. And in some cases, non-existent. I think that might be a big problem. And so children are easily distracted. You listen to their language. I hear more curse words used by, by school children now than I hear from adults. Although they learn it from the adults, but they, 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 they don't seem to have regard or respect for, for a lot of things that you and I may have had regard for. But the teachers, I, I, I want to tell them that they have to, to really pray. Advice to my teachers is that they pray. Pray fervently. Meditate. Ask God to let the Holy Spirit be their guide in dealing with those difficult, those rambunctious children that come to them. I know it's not easy and it will not become easier. And we must put use God as our guide, our, as our hope, our strength, if we are to achieve success in our, in our, in our schools, in our work. All the teachers, I, when we meet together, those of us who were led by Mr. Fowell, I could tell you Mr. Fowell is always a topic of discussion. We remember the good old times, we remember the things, you know, the sheriff did, and we laugh and we smile, because we know as men, these were good things. And I do not think today, um, 
um, we, 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 would, we will see another Mr. Fowell, another principal, another leader like Mr. Fowell.